In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to build a Windows 10 image to be used within Open Nebula and to create a KVM based Windows virtual machine. So, in order to build the image, we need an Open Nebula environment. All right, I've already created one locally by using Mini One, which is an easy to use deployment tool to build an evaluation Open Nebula cloud based on either KVM virtual machines or LexD system containers. You can download the latest release from Mini One GitHub repository and then install it. But here you'll see I've already installed Open Nebula on this laptop for a local installation. After the installation, you'll re receive a report with information that includes the username and password. And when we get the URL for connecting to Sunstone, we'll enter the username and password for login. So we log into the, U the Sunstone UI. You can see that there is a local host as a KVM hypervisor that's available. In the Images tab, Mini One will import from the Open Nebula public marketplace a CentOS image. In order to build a Windows image, we need the Windows 10 installation ISO file. An evaluation of Windows Enterprise can be downloaded from the Microsoft website. We will also need the Vert.io drivers for Windows. Vert.io is a virtualization standard for network and disk device drivers. You can download the stable ISO of Vert.io drivers for Windows virtual machines from the Fedora project website. Finally, we need the add-on that provides contextualization for the Windows guest virtual machines running in the Open Nebula cloud. Based on the provided contextualization parameters, the packages prepare the networks, set passwords, run custom start scripts, among other things. The ISO can be downloaded from the GitHub repository. Now, we've already downloaded the ISO images locally in a directory that the one admin user currently has access to. So now we need to register the images in the default data store. So we'll create a Windows ISO, select a CD-ROM image, and now we specify the path in the server where the Windows ISO image is located. Okay. Now we're going to do the same for the vert IO drivers. Again, select CD-ROM, specify the path. And lastly, we do the same for the contextualization drivers. Okay, we also need a disk where to install the Windows operating system. We'll create a data block image. Right. Here you can specify the size, we'll say you know, 45 GB. We set the persistence to yes, so the changes made inside the VM will be saved back to the data store after the VM is shut down or, or terminated. Okay, I'm just refreshing. Okay, now the image is ready. Okay, now we'll create a VM template in order to proceed with the installation of the Windows 10. We'll set a value for the memory of 16 GB for a CPU, a virtu virtual CPU to four. We add in the storage tab, each disk corresponding to each image that we've pre previously created in the default data store. Here you have to specify the vert.io driver. Then we specify the network for the vert.io for the model. We specify the bootable flag for the Windows 10 ISO 
We'll also add in a tablet, USB option in order to avoid issues with the mouse when connecting via VNC to the virtual machine. So once the template is created, we can instantiate a VM for the installation of Windows 10. We'll connect to the virtual machine once it's running by using the VNC console that's integrated in the Sunstone interface. Let's proceed with the installation. All right, here we'll choose the custom installation option that's provided. As you can see, there are no disks available. We need to load the Vert IO drivers for SCSI controllers. They'll be loaded in order to access the disk. So after the drivers have been installed, we can select the disk for the installation. Okay. I'll get back in a few minutes after the installation is finished. Now the machine will reboot. We don't want to press any key since the operating system will boot from the installation disk. All right. Now we're going to press restart. Now, after the machine is rebooted, right, we're going to proceed with the setup by specifying the region, keyboard layout, the creation of the first user, right, and we'll finish the setup and get back in a few minutes once again. Okay, the setup is complete. Now we're just going to wait a few more minutes until the Windows loads up. Okay, now we're going to proceed to install the contextualization packages. Okay, go to the PC, select the CD-ROM that contains the Open Nebula contextualization installer, double click, and the package will be installed. We also need to install a few other Vert IO drivers for the network card and the PCI device that controls the memory ballooning. And we'll use the device manager in the control panel. Okay. You can see some of the devices are not recognized. We select the device and we update the driver by using the CD-ROM that contains the Vert IO drivers for the network driver. And we can select the PCI device for the memory ballooning. Now we can shut down the Windows operating system. And we can terminate the VM. Now we have to change the Windows installation disk from data block to operating system. And change the persistence from yes to no. So now the image can be cloned for instantiating different VMs. We can also delete the default ISOs that are not needed anymore. 
In order to test the image, we can update the VM template by deleting the disks associated with the ISOs, leaving only the disk where the Windows operating system has been installed. After updating the template, we can instantiate the VM and we can connect to the VM by using VNC and the Windows login will be displayed. So there you have it. We've got a Windows 10 image running in Open Nebula.